I think you would agree that understanding the proper methodology of sizing, selecting, and installing water meters for your commercial and industrial applications is extremely important for every water utility. In part four of this series, we'll take a deeper dive into the metering technologies that I use for low flow applications. We'll look at three things, how they work, what their typical operating ranges are, and lastly, we'll take a look at seven distinct criteria and see how they align with these small meter technologies. Let's dive into it. In today's lesson, we're going to start talking about the different metering technologies that are available to you. We're eventually going to cover all four types of meters, small meters that are used for low flow applications, turbine meters, compound, and ultrasonic meters. Today, we're going to focus on small meters. We're going to cover three things. One, how they work. Two, their typical operating range. And three, we'll review seven distinct metering characteristics and see how they apply to small meters. As you may know, there are four types of mechanical meters that are traditionally used for small meter applications. Positive displacement nutating discs, oscillating piston, single jet, and multi-jet meters. Now the first two, the positive displacement nutating disc and the oscillating piston, these are positive displacement meters, meaning that they actually measure volume, right? The latter two, the single jet and multi-jet, are very much like a turbine meter where they're an inferential meter. They actually measure velocity and infer that into a volumetric number. For this discussion, I'm gonna simply focus on one type of meter. I'm gonna focus on the positive displacement nutating disc a lot of the things that I'm going to talk about related to typical operating range and meter characteristics are the same across the board. So let's watch this short video that explains how a positive displacement nutating disc meter operates. Badger's disc meters are ideal where there's a low flow rate, making them a perfect choice for residential use. Here's a step-by-step -step description of that process. Water flows directly into the meter housing. The water first flows through the meter's internal strainer before it enters the measuring chamber. The strainer protects the measuring chamber from damage due to debris in the water. Inside the chamber assembly is a movable disc that's located on a sliding ball guided by a thrust roller. As the water flows into the measuring chamber, it causes the disc to nutate, a motion similar to a coin dropped on a table. Notice that the disc does not rotate, but rather wobbles on its axis. Therefore, the space formed between the disc and the chamber wall has a constant volume as it moves around the chamber. The water in the chamber is a fixed volume, or displacement. That's why a disc meter is called a positive displacement meter. The smooth motion of the disc also eliminates the annoying noise produced by some other types of positive displacement meters. As this happens, the nutating disc translates its movement through a magnetic coupling to the register. The water then leaves through the outlet port of the chamber assembly. Hopefully you, you better understand how a positive displacement nutating disc meter operates after watching the video. Another analogy that might resonate with you is the fact that think about the internal chamber as it being a cup, right? If you've got a cup of water, and let's say that cup is 1 one hundredth of a gallon, and you've got a gallon bucket here that you want to fill up, you know you have to fill that cup up 100 times and dump it into the larger bucket, right? That's how this chamber works. It is a known volume, and then you know how many times you fill that up, and you know how many gallons that that equates to. So it's a very simple mechanism. Let's take a closer look at the operating ranges of typical uh, small meters. Let's start off by looking at your, your standard household size meter the half inch or the 5 8 size meter. I wanna look at three things, operating range, maximum continuous duty, and extended low flow. Now I went over these in a prior lesson so you understand what these particular terms mean. But in the case of a, a half inch or a 5 8 meter, these have a great low flow capability, right? I'm able to read down to a half gallon per minute all the way up to 25 gallons per minute, plus or minus one and a half percent, right? 
It has a maximum continuous duty of 15 gallons per minute, meaning that if I have an application that runs, let's say 14 gallons per minute, most of the time I could still use this meter. But if I had an application that was running at 20 gallons per minute continuously, most of the time, I would need to upsize to the next size meter, the three quarter inch meter. Now in the case of the extended low flow, this is where the manufacturer says, well, you know what? It's not plus or minus a percent and a half, but in this case, the meter is accurate down to, let's say, 95% or 97% down to a quarter of a gallon per minute. Some manufacturers will state that even at this 5.8 size, their extended low flow is also accurate at 98.5%, meaning that I'm accurate to a quarter of a gallon per minute at 98.5% accuracy. That's pretty good. Now, many times we don't think about these meters as commercial and industrial meters, but think about it like this. If my application is a gas station and literally that gas station only has two bathrooms, well, that's the equivalent of a home, really. A home normally has more fixtures than that. That would be a great use of this meter even in a commercial application. Let's take a look at one of the larger sizes. Let's take a look at the two inch meter. For a positive displacement nutating disc, even a two inch meter is very accurate at low flows. Its typical operating range goes down to two and a half gallons per minute, but has the capability to read all the way up to 170 gallons per minute. Its max continuous duty is at 100 gallons per minute, and then also its extended low flow, 95% accuracy goes down to one and a half gallons per minute. Let's move our discussion now into the metering characteristics. There's seven characteristics that I want to focus on, and basically over this series, we'll cover each of these types of meters, but in this case, we're going to focus specifically on the disc meter. First characteristic is the measurement type. We talked about that earlier. It's a positive displacement meter. The flow range ratio, meaning what is the ratio from high to low? In this case, if you look at a two inch disc meter, that two inch disc meter is accurate down to one and a half gallons all the way up to 170, meaning it's about a hundred to one ratio low to high. Low flow sensitivity. I would characterize that for a disc meter as excellent. The reason I would say that is because that's what these meters are meant to do. They're good for some intermediate flows. They're not made for high flows. They're excellent for low flow capability based on how the mechanism is designed. I would categorize head loss as good. When it comes to maintenance periods, I would categorize that as extended. There's not a lot of maintenance that needs to be done in the case of a positive displacement nutating disc meter. Normally you're going to have some type of testing frequency for that. And normally they also have an integral strainer built into it. So it's not a lot of things that you're going to have to do maintenance wise to that meter. Now let's do this. Let's compare each of these types of meters over time here to a turbine meter. If I take, let's say a two inch turbine meter and I compare that to a two inch disc meter, when it, when it comes to cost, it's about 80% of the cost of that two inch turbine meter. So you're going to save a little money on the positive displacement nutating disc as compared to the turbine meter. But the cost savings shouldn't come into play. The meter needs to be selected according to the application. But I wanted to let you know the difference in cost between these meters. When it comes to application, these meters are designed for low to intermediate flows. They're not designed for high flows. So hopefully after reviewing those three areas, you have a better understanding of how these meters work and where they should be applied. If you have any questions about today's topic, feel free to ask a question in the comment section below and I'll personally provide you with an answer or if you'd rather send a private message or have any questions related to metering or meter reading systems that I can help you with, be sure to connect with me on LinkedIn. Our question of the day, what other aspects of meter sizing, selection, and installation do you want to know more about? Please provide your question in the comment section below. Be one of the first 10 people to reply to be entered into our weekly Smart Water Show giveaway. If you found value in this content, be sure to click the like button. And if you have a colleague that would benefit from listening to this episode on sizing and selection, be sure to share it with them by clicking the share button. Stay tuned for part five of this series where similarly to today, we'll examine turbine meter technology. We'd like to thank you for watching this video and we'll catch you next time on the Smart Water Show.